If you've been around my channel long enough, you know I have a bone to pick with chiropractors. In response, many chiropractors have spoken out in defense of their profession, sometimes firing back with critiques about surgeons and the danger inherent in what we do. So today, we'll address those critiques head on, and I'll add a little bit of nuance to my previous arguments. Let me first be more precise. My frustration is not necessarily with all chiropractors, but rather those who insist on performing manipulations as the mainstay of treatment for mechanical back and neck pain, or those who promote the use of spinal manipulation for the treatment of a myriad of non-musculoskeletal diagnoses. There we go. Oh. 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 When I say manipulation, I am referring to the application of pressure to a person's spine or other parts of their body by the chiropractor. This could be anything from a hammer tap or gentle palpation, um, which is a very, very effective tool, to a swift rotational jerk or Y strap adjustment. Now, by targeting chiropractic manipulation, it may seem that I've painted the entire profession with a broad brush, but there are some chiropractors that I actually really like. Aaron Kubal, Matt Colby, Raymond St. Augustine, and Bobby Maybe to name a few, all of whom I have interviewed on my podcast. Chiropractic manipulation may be present in their treatment method, but there are many other techniques deployed alongside it to create a robust approach that differs depending on the injury and the patient. The style of chiropractic treatment that I appreciate is fairly similar to physiotherapy. That is to say, it addresses specific musculoskeletal weaknesses and imbalance with exercises tailored to the aforementioned deficiencies that put the patient in an active role to systematically strengthen and correct them. You have to not let anybody mess with it and it has to just be you. You have to do it to whatever your limitation is. The solution is for you to figure out how to move your shoulder comfortably yourself. If you're a chiropractor and you fit within this realm, interesting. we might actually get along. Cool. Otherwise, my frustration hinges on three major factors based on my own observation and research. Chiropractic manipulation puts the patient primarily in a passive role. In other words, someone is doing something to you without you participating in the treatment. Chiropractic manipulation lacks a solid scientific basis, which we are unable to confirm through scientific study. Some chiropractors deploy a similar treatment approach for many different patients with a wide variety of musculoskeletal problems. Perhaps they are the ones with the broad brush. Primarily the right hip, okay. sometimes the left hip hurts. Holy f And I have a pinched nerve on my left uh, side that like balls on the bottom of your neck and it radiates down into my arm. <laughs> I feel very tight through my shoulder area where my kyphosis is. I would lay down on the floor and I, my head would not touch the ground. I have explored each of these critiques in detail in previous videos and we'll leave links to those down below for those of you who are interested in further details or references upon which these critiques are founded. And before we move on, I want to quickly clarify some things as my critiques have been misconstrued in the past. I am not saying that a technique must have a confirmable scientific basis to hold value to a patient as everyone's experience is their own. Holy moly. <laughs> what in the world? Where we run into problems is when something with no confirmable scientific basis does hold statistically significant scientific risk and or when it is proposed as a treatment for something to which it has no confirmable correlation. I am also not suggesting that passive techniques can't hold some value. They totally can. Massage, acupuncture, cupping, ultrasound, or electric stimulation, etc. You may feel market improvement after one such session. Oh, trust me. <laughs> That's a real deal too. But again, 
The difference lies in what practitioners of other methodologies claim that they can effectively treat and or what the evidence shows them to be viable treatments for. From my observation, chiropractic has assumed a role as an alternative solution to mechanical back pain, neck pain, and sometimes even more severe physical disorders associated with the spinal column, such as paralysis and even spondylitis. Come on, bro. Let me put the record straight. Chiropractors have no business making claims like these. Furthermore, the risk associated with other passive methodologies is relatively lower than with some chiropractic techniques. Oh. Oh. That wasn't what I wanted to move, but it moved. It moved. To put it bluntly, these techniques are more likely to sever an artery in your neck than this. And yes, that has happened before. We covered it in previous videos. Now, I'm willing to wager that this is the type of inflammatory comparison which I have used many times in the past, is exactly the type that leads to the following response. Yeah, well surgery is more dangerous than chiropractic. To which I respond, yes, it absolutely is. But, and this cannot be overstated, we do everything we can to avoid surgery. Huh? This is the biggest difference. Interns, buckle up. I'm about to break it down. Medicine is a huge field that covers a wide variety of conditions, diseases, injuries, and diagnoses. All of these maladies occur in many different states of acuity and chronicity. Musculoskeletal care is only one slice of this large pie. But even within that musculoskeletal slice, multiple different types of diagnoses are contained. Traumatic injuries, repetitive injuries, infectious, genetic diseases, cancers, metabolic conditions, and more come under the purview of musculoskeletal specialists. All of these diagnoses reflect a very large and diverse population of patients with medical problems of varying severity, some being relatively minor, while others are of a life and death nature. Given the wide variety of conditions and severity, it should come as no surprise that there are a variety of risks and a wide range of complication rates associated with their management. Chiropractic therapy, on the other hand, at its core is focused on only a single musculoskeletal condition, mechanical back or neck pain of an acute or chronic nature. If we want to be generous, in some instances, a chiropractic therapist might also be able to treat additional non-axial musculoskeletal injuries as well, if they use an evidence-based active therapy approach. However, it quickly becomes clear that chiropractic therapists can effectively treat only a very small sliver of the pie slice that allopathic musculoskeletal specialists treat, and almost none of the overall medical condition pie. Given that chiropractic care is focused on the treatment of a relatively benign musculoskeletal condition that has a favorable natural history, it makes sense that the risk associated with chiropractic care is less than that associated with medical or surgical care. By favorable natural history, I mean to say the condition to which chiropractic care is most often directed mechanical back or neck pain of an acute or chronic nature, if untreated will generally resolve on its own without treatment in six weeks or less. This was first shown in the late 1980s by the late Dr. Gordon Waddell, an orthopedic surgeon and back pain pioneer and corroborated by other researchers since then. A 2011 overview published in the Therapeutic Advances of Musculoskeletal Disease tells us approximately 50% of people have resolution of back pain symptoms at one week and 80 to 90% better by six weeks. Thus, we can infer not all pain is cause for concern. I do, however, recognize that it still may drastically inhibit a person's day-to-day -day function. What happened? It took me a half hour to get to the copier. It should be noted that the fear and confusion surrounding pain, especially when it is severe, chronic, or lacks a clear physiologic basis. So not sure what caused it, kind of got sore as the day went on. So we're gonna, uh leads many people to worry unnecessarily, which can make it worse, and ultimately to try alternative approaches like chiropractic when it's possible nothing needs to be done. A more in-depth understanding of pain, how it manifests, and when to worry may be helpful to many people. Let me know if you'd be interested in a video on this topic. 
When the pain is persistent and potent, a patient and care provider may be compelled to do something about it. And many surgeries have been performed that were unsuccessful in treating the pain. Help me doctor, help me please, my knee hurts, oh no please. As I've already stated, surgery is inherently dangerous. We're cutting into your body, drilling or sawing bone in order to permanently alter your musculoskeletal system. All while you're in a short term medically induced coma not to mention the pain medication that necessarily follows. I'm still in pain right now. You're still in pain? I mean, I'm not in pain, I'm just high. Yeah. Am I gonna be all right? As such, Gordon Waddell actually developed a method of delineating between pain with an anatomical basis and something historically referred to as psychogenic pain, a term which is no longer in use, which arises from the complex interplay of multiple factors, including mental state, temperament, environment, past trauma, etc. The eponymous Waddell signs help to identify patients with low back pain who were likely to experience a poor surgical outcome from lower back surgery. More recently, clinicians have utilized Waddell signs to detect psychogenic, sometimes inappropriately labeled non-organic, manifestations of low back pain in patients. These signs are designed to keep patients with pain with no identifiable physical origin off of the operating table. Surgeons have other testing procedures designed to achieve the same end. Do chiropractors have similar testing procedures? Are they likely to tell you that you are unsuitable for chiropractic manipulation? Like, how often is that likely to occur? Or instead, do they tell you to book with the administrative staff for several follow-up treatments? When you consider that there is a risk of injury higher than chance alone associated with some chiropractic procedures, the recurring nature of the practice may also be unsettling. To be honest, chiropractic care really shouldn't offer any additional risk because if you did nothing, there would be no risk and the pain symptoms would still go away if it is the mechanical type with an identifiable root cause. So comparing the relative risks of chiropractic care and allopathic musculoskeletal care is not even meaningful because it is kind of like comparing one fruit in the produce section to the whole freaking grocery store. Even if we limit our comparison to back related complaints, there is another reason why this comparison is disingenuous. Don't Shorten your compare dress. They would yourself never to me. You see, you cannot compare the risk of chiropractic therapy for mechanical complaints against the risk of surgical care for mechanical complaints because surgery is not used for the treatment of mechanical complaints. Mechanical back and neck pain is not a surgical indication. In fact, surgical indications for the spine include structural or neurological instability of the spine, loss of bowel or bladder function as a result of neural compression, objective lower extremity weakness or paralysis as a result of neural compression, or intractable pain that has failed all other non-operative treatments, including physical therapy, chiropractic therapy, medical management, and bracing. It is a treatment of last resort. So given that surgery is only used to treat problems that have failed chiropractic therapy, it should come as no surprise that while not directly comparable, the risks and associated complications are higher. I am a surgeon. I'm a surgeon. It is my job to perform operations on people, and yet I actively avoid surgery at all costs. I am a surgeon. I am a surgeon. Non-surgical options are the healthiest approach for my patients, if at all possible. If the same thing can be solved non-surgically, then this is the better option. When choosing treatment options as a surgeon, we are always trained to use the option that is the most effective, but that offers the lowest risk profile. Meanwhile, there are chiropractors out there using techniques known to be associated with legitimate risk as a signature move, a finisher, if you will, like the Salt Bay seasoning his steak. Oh my God, oh my God, Dev, Dev, you better get your phone out and film. What, why? This is why she's here, damn it. But only the steak is a person and the salt is a Y strap. Ostensibly not a non-risk maneuver. These issues have been exacerbated with the rise of social media influencer type chiropractors and their ASMR cracking celebrities in yoga pants approach. Obviously, these people are interested in growing their brand and the financial gain associated with that. Oftentimes, in my opinion, at the expense 
of the treatment. It is doubly frustrating to know that there are chiropractors out there who run a respectable practice who have felt unfairly attacked. I hope this video has helped to identify where and with whom my frustrations lie, as well as to address the critiques formulated against me. If you're interested in moving better and preventing injury in a non-operative manner, please visit my online gym, Human 2.0, for free right here on YouTube. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. If you didn't, be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.